Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. It's been a bit quiet lately, I know, but uh yeah. It's been a been a bit hectic with the with the uh the noob household and I've got a little one, so as you can tell, Easter's always busy and I hope everyone out there in internet land have uh enjoyed their Easter as well. I hope uh families haven't been too wound up receiving all that chocolate anyway I've been sitting here having two minutes myself having a cup of tea nice Welsh brew lovely and I had a quick gander at um, the Warhammer community page and I noticed we've got something to really look forward to uh, c come the weekend so what am I on about uh, as we all know, come Saturday, the new Slanesh model is coming out. There's going to be some, uh, the 40k AOS models, as per every demon. It's the Hedonites of Slanesh for the uh, AOS side. And they got some rather lovely models. And i got to be honest, the more I've looked at one, I've uh, I've grown to like it, and I'll give you a couple of seconds now. Have a think what the uh, model that was. Probably the only one I didn't like this, but anywho, I'm gonna go over new stats for our new characters and uh, new models, and I think tomorrow I'm gonna go over the abilities for the three mini factions within the book. So, well, here we go, down the rabbit hole with uh, Slanesh. Right, and first up on the bat is, well, it's the model that I didn't like when I first saw it. When it was, um, when it was on, uh, you know, an exclusive uh, sneak peek, I really didn't like it. It was just something about it that didn't connect with me. I think it might have been it looked didn't look very demonic it just had the extra arms like we used to but it just didn't have the I don't know I was so used to like the bull face aspect but the more I've seen it and I including the meme where somebody's mocked it up as uh, Freddie Mercury it's kind of grown on me I like it it's got that it's got a, a very a very good allure to it which you kind of always get from the law of um, Slanesh so it's it looks like it's just slow sultry walking into battle instead of raging like a corn demon so it's taking me time to get round round there but I do feel this is a very good epitome of Slanesh and I'd love to get my hands on it it's I might have to wait a couple of weeks to get my hand on it and yeah I'm still waiting to get my hands on Bloodthirster to be honest because uh, you know with the bills and everything but we're not here to moan about that we're here to look at the rules and the rules are as followed right time to get back on track here is a basic loadout for the Keeper of the Secrets looks like you've got a mixture of uh, weapons for him but let's give him a breakdown as we see it in front of us we've got the missile weapon it's the living whip I think this is a very good weapon and I think if I'm gonna carry on doing a you know corn and slanish this is one of the weapons that I would use so why do I say that? Why do I say that? It's because... Let's go. It's... Range of 6. 1 attack. 3 plus to hit and to wound. It's minus 1 rend. And it does 1 damage. But that's not the only thing it does. I'm going to 
give you a little uh, readout from another ex excerpt that we got and that is if this model is armed with the living whip at the start of the combat phase you can pick one enemy monster modeled with within six inches of the model and roll a dice on a three plus pick one melee weapon that monster that enemy monster model is armed with subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made that the, with that weapon until the end of that combat phase so if you're one of these people that's got you know hero on a monster thinking you can get all your hits out say like you got I know go king on a terror guy say and we all know that's a nice little model because they get all your hits in at the end well if you were hit them with this and you were lucky to roll the over the three plus you could use a 50 50 in there you've made it harder for them to hit so you can take it you would really stunt the heaviest hitting blow so so I think that's really worth it as an ex as an extra but as I always say what do you guys think uh, is it too much is it you thinking no it's not as good as what I think the comment section is below and that's where you can tell me if I'm right or wrong or you just you know bothered by it because of the 50 50 right going on to the melee weapons now and we've got the ritual knife or sinistrous hand one inch range one attack two plus a hit three plus a wound minus one rend one damage it's not bad it's an attack i think if you've got four hands it's a really decent attack to hit with this is my favorite the elegant great blade two inch range and it's got that little uh, star that they like so you know this is going to be affected by the damage table the hit is a three plus to wound is a three plus minus one to rend and it does two damage so always good and like we said underneath it says for wounds suffered or the elegant blade if it's not a three wounds you get four attacks four attacks and they like two damage each if you're lucky enough to hit then it goes three plus from four to six same for seven to nine ten to twelve wounds it goes down to two and thirteen plus it's two wounds so we know it's going to be oh i'm going to guess a sixteen wound model Possibly it's gonna it's gonna be a high number on this one, and I think that's down to depravity points is gonna be a key, but we're gonna cover that tomorrow. And we've got impaling claws. So impaling claws are three inches on range. Uh, two attacks, three plus three plus to hit and a wound, a minus two rend, and it does damage star. So you know that's gonna go on the wounds table so as we go um, down onto the damage table it does five damage if you suffer up to three wounds four to six it does four and then seven to twelve it does three and then 13 plus it does two so the, wor the more damage you take the worse it's going to be that's the usual shtick in uh, AOS and that's why we like it but and as you can see on the damage table the movement suffers a great deal so you know and as we can tell it's got a movement of 14 inches so she's not a slow talk i say she should say shim because we don't know don't want to assume gender so yeah it's she's not a slow pork or shim's not a slow pork sorry and she's not the uh, slow in combat so I like this she's a nice elegant model she's got a very nice move set and yeah she's gonna be one to look out for on the on the uh, the field that's probably gonna be as soon as she's in range target priority number one but I think because they slanesh that's what they want you to do because I'm gonna go over the 
a, a rule later for the the new Keeper of Secrets uh, special character, which wants you to attack her. So I'll t we'll cover that in a second. Right then, guys, we are now going on to a special ability of a Keeper of Secrets. I don't know whether all of them are going to have it, you know, including the special characters, but I don't see why not. It's called Dark Temptation, and while I've been rattling on, you've probably read it. At the start of the combat phase, you can pick one enemy hero within three inches of this model and ask your opponent if they wish that hero to accept temptation. If they refuse, the he that hero must su suffer D3 mortal wounds. If they accept, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by that hero. Then at the start of the next combat phase, roll a dice. One to three, that hero no longer receives a modifier for their hit rolls. On a four to six, that hero is slain. Wow. Very slinish because it's excessive. So how I see that is you're giving you you know, you're giving a time limit for that hero that they've gone up against. they yeah, you're giving them a you're giving them a plus one for one round, but as you can see previously they got over thirteen wounds for the thirteen plus and if you can survive that round you've got either a hero that goes down to like basic grunt level or he's he's killed off so it that makes the game a little bit more fascinating on it it's it's something about these slanesh rules very dark and twisted and i like it i really do like it because like you've got to ask your opponent whether they accept it or whether they don't so it's either d3 mortal wounds if they refuse which is never a good good start or they get the modifier knowing that they could possibly lose that hero in the next phase it's dark it's twisted and it's fantastic it's very it's very slanesh I never thought I'd be so happy for Slanesh rules. This is amazing. Now that I've uh, got over Dark Temptation, I want to cover this special ability of the new named character Keeper of Secrets. I think I'm saying it right. It's Shalaxi Hellbane. That sounds very chaos y. You put Hellbane. Hell, that, that's, that's chaos. But she is the new model. She does does look very pretty. That where they've done a purple and black. It's a nice good scheme. It's, a, it's got a you know, it's got a shield and a pike, so it makes it a little bit different. But I'm not here to go over the model. I'm here to go through one of the abilities, and it's called irresistible challenge. So, let's read it out. At the start of the enemy charge phase, you can pick one hero within 12 inches of this model and more than 3 inches from any model from your army. And ask your opponent if they wish the hero to accept the Shalaxi Hellbane's challenge. If they refuse, the hero suffers D3 mortal wounds. If they accept, that hero must attempt a charge and must finish their, move, their charge move within half an inch of this model if it is possible for it to do so. In addition, if the challenge is accepted, any attack that hero makes in the following combat phase must target this model. So, it's a 40k, I would say it's a buffed up version of a 40k challenge in AOS. So, if you've got somebody on a very important, you know, objective marker, and you know the hero's coming in to clear them out. You can, you can get, you can like stop them um, wiping out the unit or try into while reinforcements are coming in. So it is really good. And if they say no, that's D three. So you know they go in on the back foot. So yeah, I like it. I really do like it. Whether the model is going to be expensive point wise 
is another matter because not only is she a demon, well she's a greater demon, it's a character, so you know, it's going to be a lot more abilities, a special command ability and she's going to be a lot of points, probably 360 I'm going to get, I'm going to guess at that, if you want, you could leave your guesses down below. Right and guys, now we're going into one of the more interesting HQs. I think is coming out this this next week, and his name is Shalefk, the Vengeful Alliance. Why I find this fascinating is because they don't say a lot on the AOS side of the uh, War Scrolls, but on the 40k one, they they've stated it is a cross between a herald and a demon prince. So you know he's going to be, you know, tough and he's hard. And then as you can see by him, he's taller than, I think, if you look at him on scale, he's taller than most of the other demons. So he's taller than the men in, in the faction as well. But he's going to be a beast. And he's also got, I think, some weird demonette strung up on the top or she's just straddling part of his wires on the back I'm not quite sure it looks like she's been threaded through it to be honest and the only hand she's got free is holding the living whip so perhaps I'm wrong it looks a very strange and bizarre model to me and I kind of like it for that but I'm not here to just talk about how he looks I'm here to talk about his you know his rules and his weapons so let's go and have a look at the breakdown on them Right then guys, as we got on the screen we got Sugar Tits's uh, weapons count and we're looking at the melee weapons so I think that's all he's got is the melee weapons but he's also got um, command abilities and spells as well so he's a, he's a toolbox unit they called him so I think he's able to slot into most builds within the book so he's a nice all rounder so here we go. His melee weapons are the Axe of Domination, which is the big two-handed one, range two inches, four attacks, four plus to hit, three plus to wound, minus two rend, d3 damage. So, if you can get, say, two or three of the attacks off, each of them are doing d3. That's nice. That's very nice rule it's like it's hard to hit but it pays off once you've hit so i like that it's nothing to uh it's nothing to sneeze at with there but we're going on to the scourging whip two inches range eight attacks three plus four plus to hit into wound minus one rend one damage that's nice eight attacks you're going to hit the fair few times with there even me with my bad rolling as you saw as you saw in my uh, blood bowl videos I got really bad rolls but even I could hit with most of these so uh, I think he's going to be a bit of a beast if you get too close so yeah it's going to be interesting to see the rest of his rules because I, I want to see how they reckon he changes the abilities of the battlefield and how he's going to benefit a lot of the army builds here he's going to be like you probably going to want him in every list the way people are talking but who knows i want to just see it all and then make a comment about it but yeah i'm going to go on to a spell he's got now which is unique to him Right then guys, the spell we got here now is called Subvert, which I think is unique to this character. And what it does, it's got a casting value of 7. It's, if successful, you can pick one enemy hero within 18 inches of the caster that is visible to them. That hero cannot use any command abilities until your next hero phase. So you've shut down a hero, if you can get this off. Mm, to me that's big. Because command ability, you you take the heroes for the command abilities, and if you can shut one down, 
say you've got a keeper of secrets going up against I don't know let's, let's have fun by it is it like say a stormcast hero on a star drake say you can say I'm going to use subvert to uh, stop him using any command abilities then keep the secrets living whip can knock back uh, maybe uh, one of the attacks so you're effectively making it harder for them to hit you even though that's a, that's a good like you good monster so yeah it's he is a bit of a toolbox but uh, so you could use him to set up ready for for another hero you could shut down a hero ready for him to be charged because as i will go over some factions are going to want to charge because they get more points and the property points but yeah but that's not all he's got his own um command ability which can be used in the combat phase or the battle shock phase it's called regal authority so let's have a look at that now Right then guys, Regal Authority is upon us, so let's have a little read. You can use this command ability at the start of your combat phase if this model is your general and is on the battlefield. If you do so, until the end of the fa that phase, you can re-roll hit rolls of 1 for friendly Chaos Slanish units while they are wholly within 18 inches of this model. No, that's, that's big that's a nice big range it's it's good it's good to me that's that's good you've got this big massive bubble of very fast moving hard hitting units if they're done right because there's all other other buffs but it says as long as he is your general and is on the battlefield and i'm going to go over it tomorrow but i believe it's the pretenders um ability where they can have two two generals on the field so you don't have one you can have two so you can have say this one and a keeper of the secrets if the points are lower so yeah that, that's that's amazing to me it's uh that's really good but that's not all because as you can see there's another bit of blurb at the bottom in addition, you can use this command ability at the start of the battle shock phase. If this model is your general and, uh, and is on the battlefield, if you do so until the end of that phase, do not take battle shock tests for friendly chaos slanish units while they are wholly, wholly within 18 inches of this model. So, it's a very interesting ability because you can use it in either stage. So, if you know you don't need it, like you'd, you're probably pressing an advantage you can hold off until uh, the battle shock phase where you know you're going to start losing units and then you could just you could play your command point then so yeah I, th I think if I'm going to go down the slanish route after I finish my corn 2000 points which is a whole other kettle of fish we'll go down that another day I think this is going to be my ma one of my main HQs because I kind of like how weird it is. It's it's got it's yeah it's very slanish for me. It's very excessive. It's very to the point. I I've actually got a smile on my face because of these models. It, it's fantastic. Right then, guys. Now we're going on to the last one I know we've gone on a bit long at the moment but this is the last one I wanted to talk about because this is another one I think you're going to see a lot of I think that Herald that we just spoke about just now is going to be one I think you're going to see another one of these and then depending on how many you can take perhaps you could take two because these are fantastic it's very excited they're called the contorted epit epitome I'm calling them it's a very snaky octopusy portal controlled by two very well dressed uh, demonettes which is quite shocking because I've ne I would never have said well dressed demonettes before but 
not only is it a good looking model it's a nice big chunky model it's got some really amazing rules which I, I really do like it's I'm gonna go over them now because because of these rules I think we're gonna see at least two in, ev in every army if I'm wrong and you don't think these things are gonna appear let me know right because oh, these these are amazing right and guys let's kick this off as we mean to go on we're gonna go I know we gift of power gift of power is you can re-roll casting and binding and dispelling rolls for this model it doesn't say one per turn it says you can re-roll casting and binding and dispelling so to me if you don't get a first try you've always got a second attempt no matter what you're doing i know you're going to say that's excessive but that's what we like when it comes to slanesh and I think that's why it's the input as the linchpin for the magical side of the army because of how it's going to dominate like that and I believe it can cast two spells and unbind two as well so it's going to be a it's going to be a target but it's got abilities to stop you going head on with it so let's try let's try going into what would happen if you attacked it melee wise right then guys you've got your uh, pitch, pitchforks and axes you're feeling brave you've made it through the army of demonettes and seekers you've come face to face with my f new favorite model you're gonna try and beat up the demons and take it out you've got to get past this first it's called horrible fascination so let's read it at the start of your combat phase roll a dice for each enemy unit that is within six inches of any friendly models with this ability on a four plus that unit fights at the end of the combat phase after the player have picked any other units to fight within that combat phase if a unit that is affected by this ability is also affected by any rules that would allow it to fight at the start of the combat phase, that unit is not affected by this rule or those rules. The effects cancel each other out. Yeah, so you've got a there's a little bit of a buffer for them. But if you can if you can roll out four plus, you've given yourself time to get other units to back it up. Which is, you know, that's that's a nice little counter, considering it's a magic is a magic unit. The ability to hold people back. Whoa, whoa, boys! You wait there. I got some friends coming. I got some backup on it. But if you're in a in a pickle and you've got no one else to back you up, you've got a slight little buffer in swallow energy. So let's have a look at that now. Right then, guys. Now that I finished uh, playing uh, Bush in my head, now because every it happens every time I say swallow, I always think of that song. Swallow energy. Roll a dice each time you are allocated a mortal wound to this model. On a two plus, that mortal wound is negated. Two plus, negating mortal wounds. So if you think your big bad beastie is gonna go over there, stop it without any fuss you're joking it's probably got this i'm gonna guess five plus save and if you've got an army which is relying on mortal wounds or if they have the you know in addition to any any you know in addition to any wounds they get the mortal wounds like the corn stuff you can easily negate any extra wounds that is caused against you so I think because of this and the fact that it's going to be two spells which we'll probably see later on in the week it's it's an amazing model so if you 
and fiends and seekers and demonettes to all this you're just running around the board and depravity points on top so you're adding extra models it, it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a horror show i think but yeah that's everything i saw on the community page today i've gone over it with you and i just wanted to share my thoughts on it so do you agree with me do you think i'm well i'm uh, correct do i do i need a slight tweak in what i'm thinking am i thinking that these abilities are better than what they are we've got the comment section for that so thank you for bearing with me and i'll see you on the outro right then guys um this is the outro i told you i'll meet you here just a quick heads up if you guys are also following the mini league that we're doing uh, this not going to be anything this week. It's an Easter break for us, so we're going to use this time to recover our our faculties and prepare for the next half of the league. And yeah, it's going to be a slanish week this week. I hope you stick with me through that. There's going to be a lot more content on the way. I'm just going to get back into a rhythm. I think next week I'm going to be doing a few live streams where I'm going to be painting uh, models and I'm going to try and get it done as quick as I can and hopefully if you guys are there with me I will I will uh, get it done. You guys can keep me company, you can keep me motivated and, I d and yeah hopefully I'll uh, get, it, get it done. As I mentioned before, I am looking to start doing competitions, but that is a subject for another day. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. I'm just going to finish up, let you know that we have a Teespring account, so you can get your, your new boy, get your new bond. We've got a PayPal, uh, add me at the bottom if you uh, if you want to donate to the channel whether you do or not I'm just thankful that you were here listening in and we've also got an email if you want to send any questions if you just want to give your opinion and you don't want to do it in the comment section or if you are interested at the moment we're doing Blood Bowl but it's going to expand later on that is I'm going to try and get a few people in the club to to be on camera so we could do a challenge RGC and see if people are interested in that if you are interested and you want to play say play me um, for now I've only got Blood Bowl as I've said previously because that's what I'm allowed to I'm allowed to video and time restraints because I'm a one man army at the moment and I'm going to do the editing and I'm going to do this, that, the other with it and you know try and get regular content for you on top of that and try and do other things as well so I'm going to try and get that done in the future and if you just if you just want to drop us a line and say look I want to challenge your boy Griff or I want to challenge the Blood Bowl vet Barry we can set something up so thank you for bearing with me thank you for listening in thank you for sharing it amongst your friends and I hope you have a very good day and I shall see you again and I think next video is going over the sub factions and abilities so see you then people sayonara